Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to... You know, wait a sec. Let's redo that. Hey everybody, what's up? Today we're playing Star Wars The Jedi Fallen Order. And I'm having so much fun with it that I decided to make some guides. Today's guide will be all about Force skills, or simply just skills. Which uh, skills you should prioritize, and which skills are the best for your level Grandmaster run. So as a general rule, you really want to get better at the game with your actual skill, learning the right moment to parry, having some spatial awareness, and making use of all your abilities to their full potential, but we'll talk about that in another video. Right here, right now, if you're watching this, you're probably, you know, you've probably got a ways way to go, and that's why we've got these awesome skills to help us out, sort of aid us on our path as a Jedi. First things first. Invest in the survival skills. The game plays out a lot like Dark Souls and Sekiro, so you really want to get your health up, you know, get that max health um, so that you can, you know, uh, sort of tank those times when you, uh, you make mistakes, and trust me, you will make mistakes. So from this skill tree, you want um, survival skills, which increases your overall health. Basically, you want to prioritize all those skills that increase your overall health. This allows you to sort of have a kind of buffer, so that if you do take damage, at least it's, you know, you're, you're not dead immediately. Next, you want superior blocking, which allows you to block for longer um, before you, your stamina runs out. And this is an essential skill to have as you learn the correct timing on your parry. Um, next in line is improved stims. These simply increase the amount of health you gain from BD1 stims. And you really want this early on too because you won't be able to unlock more than three stim charges. And yes, you can unlock more than three stim charges. You can go as much as, I, I believe, 10, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. So lastly for this skill tree is precision evade and agile deflection. I would probably go for Agile Deflection more than Precision Evade, although I always, almost always take Precision Evade because that's my thing. Um, but since I, I, I mean, go for Agile Deflection because I'm pretty sure most of you won't be making use of that pr sort of evade uh, uh, factor. Uh, most of you will probably just double tap to go into a dodge roll. Um, and that's cool. That's great. But uh, Agile Deflection is sort of like the more general use, uh, which, you know, just it allows you to deflect um, projectiles and stuff as you're running or while running, um, which is also very useful. So Precision Evade is probably it just depends on how you play, uh, your whatever your play style is. But I really, I actually use uh, the Evade option a lot but we'll talk about that later on because um evade actually is uh we'll talk about it in a different video because evade is actually pretty important when it comes to grandmaster level it's something that you actually kind of need and um it's pretty cool just seeing yourself you know just ev uh, ev evading instead of just dodge rolling all the time like a dark souls player all right, our second most important skill tree will be a mix of probably half the lightsaber skill tree and half the force skill tree. I personally found it easier to fight enemies on Grandmaster when I first invested in skills like dash strike, improved dash strike, and evasive kick. Dash strike mostly because, you know, when you double tap and then dodge roll, um, you're, you're kind of, you've created distance from your opponent. And more often than not, you're, it, that, that sort of dodge effect has left your opponent sort of vulnerable and you want to, you know, get back in there. So instead of dodge rolling back in, uh, you can immediately just dash strike by holding the triangle button. Or, or whatever that button is for you because I'm playing with a controller and um, improved dash strike just you know it, it increases that range so it allows you to sort of um, bob and weave in and out of combat um, and it's just such a, an amazing technique if you're having trouble um, parrying blocking if you don't really get the timing right now evasive kick is sort of well I love to evade that's as I mentioned earlier. So my opponents, um, when I evade, my opponents are left open. Um, and that gives me that additional option to kick my opponent so that you can sort of uh, 
you know, deal a small amount of damage and just do a little bit of chip damage. But um, uh, evasive kick is mostly useful, especially useful full in one-on-one -on -one fights or against bosses um, or tough enemies like the purge troopers. Um, but if dodge roll is your thing, then go ahead and do dodge roll. You can skip this skill, but eventually you're going to have to go and get it to unlock probably the best skill in the game, which is lightsaber mastery, which gives you increased lightsaber damage. And we'll talk about that later at the end of the video. So stay around. Um, if you unlock the double sided, uh, the double bladed saber or double sided saber, however you want to, uh, however you want to call it, um, which you can early on, and we'll talk about that in a different video, you're almost always going to want to go for the sort of switch attack skill, um, which allows you to, well, as it as the name implies, switch your uh, attacks, switch your modes. Um, that also means you're going to have to invest points into delay thrust and delay combo to unlock it, which, well, they only cost one point per, per, for those two, for each of those skills. And I'm a huge fan of switching saber modes. It's just, it, it feels so cool as, you know, you, you attack one guy with double sabers and then you destroy one with a single saber. Um, so using each mode... Um, to their advantage is kind of my thing because you know both each mode has their own sort of you know, advantage is advantage um, namely double-sided sabers are used for multiple enemies um, especially if you've got like those uh, shooter troopers um, that the pesky little shooter sh shooter troopers so the double-sided sabers allows you to attack and then at the same time sort of deflect some moves and you can block immediately then single blade f is normally for one-on-one -on -one combat or for boss fights uh, which is to say that sometimes you'll be up against multiple enemies and yet you're still going to want to sort of switch back and forth between saber types. And this is actually why you should almost always want this skill um, taken if you plan on using both saber modes simultaneously. So this next on our list is the saber throws, which I feel are, uh, I feel are, are they're great and mostly used as a necessity when you play the game at higher difficulties. But um, they're, they're, you can mostly do without them. They're just, for me, they're just flair and they simply, they, they kind of look cool. But if cool is what you're going for, then go for it. Over on the four skill tree, the best one you can possibly go for would be the power of friendship skill, which allows you to completely refill your force meter every time you use one of BD1's stim canisters. However, you won't be able to unlock this skill until you've fully reconnected Calcasus to the force and he starts to remember the rest of his Jedi training. Earlier on in the game, you're going to want enhanced force recovery from the force skill tree, which allows you to recover a bit of your force meter whenever you defeat an enemy or when you hit a blocking enemy. This is especially true if you tend to use the force a lot, and I'm pretty sure if you're playing this game as a Jedi, you're probably using the force a lot. Next down the priority line of force skills are the force push and force pull skills. Um, I found my... I've actually fought my way through several um, tricky instances where there were multiple enemies by simply pulling the toughest ones closer, uh, with the exception of the purge troopers. You can't really pull those close. But um, by so simply just pulling them closer and then stabbing them with those one-shot stabbing maneuvers um, before actually engaging into combat with the rest of the, the your opponents. So force push, on the other hand, is very useful for crowd control which um, you can actually sort of, uh, you, you kind of want this against larger or heavier enemies, allowing you to buy yourself some time, just sort of push them off and just stagger them a bit. Um, so if you, if maybe you need a stim and you need to create some space between you and that big monster, that big creature, then sure, force push, um, that's where those force push skills come in handy. Um, now, there's one skill that, uh, I, I'm no stranger to YouTube videos. I watch YouTube videos, and um, there's uh, I also watch streams of people playing the Jedi um, Fallen Order. Now, one of the most underused and underappreciated skills from the Force Tree is the bursts. Um, I'm sorry, is the burst slow skill, which allows you to slow a clump of enemies and sort of just you know 
leave them there open to attack, vulnerable for whatever devious ways you have or plans you have to destroy them. And this is one of probably one of the other the best skills aside from the um, the power of friendship skill. This is probably the second best skill that you can have in your arsenal because it just it's amazing for crowd control. And trust me, in Grandmaster, when there are a lot of enemies, when there are multiple enemies, you really want that crowd control on your side. So this skill is great for multiple enemies. And if you ever feel like you're being overwhelmed by the enemy, simply slow all of them and give yourself some space to use a stim or reposition yourself for the very satisfying force push of your enemies oh, yeah. off a ledge. Now we've reached the end of our little skill guide, but I want to explain the importance of the lightsaber mastery just a little bit and how it will make your life a whole lot easier knowing these sort of mechanics. Most powerful enemies have a stamina bar, which they use to block or parry your strikes. With lightsaber mastery, your saber strikes are more powerful, and as a result, your enemies' stamina bars will deplete faster. And to the same effect that Cal has when he runs out of stamina, it sort of leaves your opponents open and uh, very vulnerable to attacks, oftentimes allowing you to one-shot your opponents with a single strike. You know those slow motion sort of animated finishers? That's what it is when your opponent has run out of... Um, well, that actually only happens in two instances when you um, deflect perfectly and um, when your opponent has run out of stamina. So uh, this also affects the the bosses as most bosses have a very meaty stamina bar and most of the time um what determines your win against a boss is when you've depleted their their well, stamina so by simply throwing Overpower in and carefully timing your flurry of saber attacks uh, alongside some parries and blocks and dodges, you can easily overpower and dominate your boss fights. Bosses take increased damage when their stamina is completely drained, but always tread carefully as uh, this is the way. Uh, I mean, uh, the force be with you. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this guide. I will see you guys in the next one. All right. Well, that'll be it. <clears throat> We're going to take a break and continue to...